Welcome to episode nine fifty one. David Cheriton, nine lessons. This is an outline of episode nine fifty one, lesson one to five. This is lesson six to nine. Lesson one: Everybody should be entrepreneur. To me, I have this more abstract notion of entrepreneur, which is that everybody should be an entrepreneur. That. You have certain value you bring to the society, so I think、uh, an entrepreneur is somebody who thinks in those terms of what value am I bringing, and you know, am I bringing this in a way that that should give me the rewards that that I'm after. And lesson two, he is the world's richest billionaire professor, now with a net worth of eight point two billion dollars. The Stanford professor could have retired thirty years ago. Lesson three: Find the right partner. His partner is Andy Bechtolsheim, the German student. While he was a professor, they have the same ideas and pretty much invest in the same thing. And with a net worth of eight billion dollars, they are very similar. Lesson four: The sports connection. There are two parts. First, he got to know Sergey Brin through rollerblading. Sergey Brin used to rollerblade in the computer science department at Stanford University. That is where they met. Professor David Cheriton is also a windsurfer. That is where he met Diane Green, and later the two founded VMware. Lesson four: He became a multi-billionaire in just one year. He founded Granite System with Andy Bechtolsheim in 1995. A year later, he was a multi-millionaire when Cisco acquired Granite System for 220 million dollars. Lesson six: His most famous investment: a check of a hundred thousand. Dollars to the Google founders. His most famous investment in Google, the year was 1998. After a meeting with Google founder Sergey Brin and Larry Page, he wrote them a 100,000 check, which is twice the amount of money the Google founders asked for. Lesson seven: He is an inventor. As an inventor, you've become well known for your work on transactional memory. How is that work going, and why is that so important? The work on transactional memory is something I'm engaged with at Stanford, and、uh, it's—I think it's a, really a transformational sort of approach to how we build computer systems.、Uh, the the model is very simple for the application software. The challenge is making it go fast enough, and I think the tricky part. Is that it's not purely a software solution you need to come up with. It's a hardware and software solution to make. As an eight, he has incredible energy, and he performed multiple roles. To the about seventeen companies of, in various levels of of investment,、um, and you know, from fairly small investments to quite large ones, and I think it's ended up being roughly fifty million dollars at this. As an eye, his three waves of computing. First wave, human productivity. For example, spreadsheet. Second wave, human connectivity. For example, email and internet. And we are now in the third wave, automation. Human automation, but somehow didn't sound quite right. But、uh, I think the third wave is this automation of things. So when you look at Uber and Waymo and so on, they're automating transportation, and it's not just those companies. It goes beyond that. Like you have Caterpillar Tractor developing, you know, self-driving bulldozers.、Uh, Airbnb is automating hospitality. Katera is another company I'm involved in, which is automating big parts of construction and supply chain. And of course, Abstro, which I'm heavily involved in, is automating the data center autom.、Uh, Management. So, I think we're seeing this whole trend automating a whole bunch. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.